and welcome to this week's Leading with Purpose Friday Digest. As we approach the holidays, I know often we think about all of those interactions we're going to have with family, friends, co-workers maybe we haven't seen in a while. And as leaders and individuals, we often think about the difficult conversations that may arise. One of the most impactful books that I've encountered in my journey is this one. Difficult Conversations, How to Discuss What Matters Most with Updated Answers. This is a 10th anniversary edition, so I would recommend this one. It's by authors Douglas Stone, Bruce Patton, and Sheila Heen. And one of the elements that really was an aha moment for me is this one. They talk about um, disentangling impact and intent. And let me explain. Um, often as human beings, we are gathering information throughout the day. Um, we're using all of our senses, our experiences, um, all of the things that make us unique as individuals, our age, our gender, our, our education, our culture, our current roles, all kinds of different things help us filter that information we're gathering from the world around us. And we do that very often with automatic thoughts, which are wonderful because they help us operate day to day, but they can also be filled with bias and assumptions. So when we're in a difficult conversation, what the authors talk about specifically in disentangling impact from intent is that moment where in our difficult conversation, we feel a certain way. Maybe I feel embarrassed. Maybe I feel hurt. Maybe I feel confused. That's the impact of the conversation on me. That's my emotional experience of that exchange, right? But it's different from intent. When we start to move to a narrative of intent, it changes from, I feel hurt, to you intended to hurt me. And as a leader, we need to be really thoughtful and practice paying attention and being self-aware in order to not only stay calm uh, in the moment, but also to allow ourselves to really hear out the other parties. We want to present a forward-facing, authentic leadership engagement that is open, that is willing to accept feedback without being defensive, that is thoughtful, that asks great questions. And if we start to move down that road of intent thinking, of that narrative that you intended to hurt me, you intended to embarrass me, um, you did this on purpose to make me feel fill in the blank, right? And so the authors talk about what we can do to make this distinction, to avoid jumping to thinking with that intent narrative. Number one is actions. What did the person actually say or do? Number two is, what was the impact of this on me? And number three is, based on this impact, what assumption am I making about what the other person intended? Again, it really makes us stop and challenge our thinking. And so, you know, if we can practice this, this is a wonderful tool to use, not only in our own difficult conversations, but also as we're helping others through any kind of workplace conflict, which leaders are often called to do. When you need to mediate a difficult conversation between one or more individuals who are having a personal conflict on the job, this is a wonderful point to listen with your own ears for that intent type behavior or language that you can see or hear from the two parties that might be in conflict. It's also a wonderful tool to teach your team and to ask them to pause and reflect to ensure that we're not making assumptions that are gonna be damaging the outcome of this conversation. So as you move forward, I encourage you to practice this new attempt at understanding not only ourselves, but the other party, giving the other person grace, um, trying to reframe that situation, maybe take a pause and step away for a moment if you need to collect yourself, but always consider intent versus impact. So as always, we are working hard to bring you new information to make you a better and more purposeful leader. I wish you the best. Take care.